In Colossians chapter 1, verses 13 and 14, the scripture describes a reality of two kingdoms. In this world, we have many nations, many people groups, many cultures. And you might identify by your nationality. You might identify by your culture. You might identify by your race. But the great equalizer of all men and women is God's holy standard. Man or woman, no matter the race, no matter the nationality, no matter your upbringing, no matter the culture, no matter your philosophy or mindsets, no matter your politics, every single one of us belong to one of two kingdoms. There is the kingdom of light, which is the kingdom of God. And there is the kingdom of darkness, which is the kingdom that belongs to Satan. And it is his kingdom. Now, sitting in this room, watching online, you may have been invited by someone to attend or someone to watch. Someone might have sent you a link. Someone may have brought you here and bribed you maybe with some meal afterwards. But you're here because you have a decision to make. To which kingdom will you belong? In which world will you exist? You have to choose one. There is no way to stay in the middle and choose neither. There was an old parable, a Pentecostal parable, we call them, about a man who was sitting on a fence in between yard, two yards. One yard belonged to Jesus, one yard belonged to the devil. And he sat on that fence because he didn't want to decide. He didn't want the pressure of deciding. He didn't want... The, he didn't like the idea of having to choose. Well, time ran out. And the enemy said, it's time for you to come with me. You belong to me. He says, no, I don't belong to you. I've been sitting on this fence, indecisive this whole time. The devil shook his head and laughed. And he scoffed. You fool. I own the fence. To reject Christ is to embrace the kingdom of darkness. To not decide for Jesus is to embrace sin. Jesus himself said it. He said that those who reject the light do so because they love their sin. He said, if you're not with me, you're against me. These are the absolute sayings of Scripture. Now, whether you know it or not, if you have not Christ, if you've yet to accept that gift of salvation that he offers to everyone, if you've met yet to make a decision to turn from your sin, repent, and put your faith in Jesus, if you've yet to do that, then your decision is already made. You've chosen to exist in the kingdom of darkness. And let me tell you the truth. Not because I'm full of hate. Not because I'm a bigot. Not because, well, I am a little narrow-minded. Jesus said narrow is the way. But I assure you I'm telling you this because I love you. And because God loves you. And because God is willing that none should perish, but that all would come to everlasting life. God desires to save you. Save me from what? You've heard it said, Jesus loves you, Jesus saves. But save you from what? Jesus saves from hell, yes. Jesus saves you also from sin. My friend, 
If you've yet to receive Christ, you need to wake up to the fact that you are a slave to sin. You're not free, you're bound. You see, the enemies, one of, it, one of the enemies' greatest deceptions, I, could, I should say, because it's not his greatest deception, but perhaps one of his greatest deceptions is this notion that to serve Christ is to live in bondage. You can't do this, you can't do that, you can't do this, you can't do that. And because people become so focused on what they can't do, they miss what they can do. It'd be like standing up on the day of your wedding and your vows being limited to, I promise not to cheat on you. How many of you women would be happy with that? Not to cherish, not to have, not to hold, but I promise I won't cheat on you. You see, marriage isn't about not cheating. It's about embracing that person in life and Serving the Lord is not just about not sinning, but my question is, why would you want to live in sin anyway? I grew up in church. I'm a fourth-generation Christian, third-generation preacher, and so I was often made fun of by my friends who teased me and mocked me for not being involved in all the things that they were involved in. They would tell me things like, you're missing out, you're missing out, you're missing out. The Holy Spirit spoke through me to them. That's right. I'm missing out. I'm missing out on STDs. I'm missing out on unplanned pregnancy. I'm missing out on losing my brain cells. I'm, I'm missing out on living a life of drunkenness. I'm missing out on all of those things in which there is sorrow and pain, darkness and shame, and the lack of dignity. You were created for so much more. You weren't created to live a life of drunkenness. You weren't created to live a life of sexual perversion. You weren't created to live a life of addiction. You weren't created to live in depression and anxiety and fear and chaos and confusion. You were created to live for the glory of God. Sin destroys. John 10.10 10 says, the thief, speaking of the enemy, the thief's purpose is to steal and kill and destroy. My purpose is to give them a rich and satisfying life. In Christ, you'll have life and life more abundantly. Now, let me be very clear here because the promise that Jesus makes isn't that your life will be perfect. In fact, he said in this world, you'll have tribulation. He promises that people will hate you for his name's sake. You know, when you get saved, if you get saved broke, you're going to leave that altar broke. You get saved, if you, if you get saved with a troubled marriage, you're going to leave that altar with a troubled marriage. But God begins to do a work in you. And he's more concerned about transforming you than he is transforming your circumstance. But Jesus did come that you might have life. He came that you might live this life to the fullest. How could he who created life not know what it is to live it to the fullest? God is not the limiter of life. God is the giver of life. Sin is that which destroys. If you've ever looked around our world and wondered what is wrong with it, if you've ever had a moment of introspection and realized that something deep within you was very, very, very off, if you've ever had that sense like something's just not right in our world, you look around at the chaos, you look around at the violence, you look around at the upheavals and uproars, and you look around at everything that is happening in our world, I'm telling you what the problem is. It's not that I have the answer the scripture does. Our issue in this world is not a political one. Not an economic one. Not a medical one issue in this world is a spiritual one. And that sickness which permeates the hearts of men and women around the globe is sin. Sin destroys the goodness of God in your life. Sin destroys who you are. Sin robs you of dignity. Adam, the first man who ever sinned, the first man who was ever created, when he sinned against God, 
his first reaction was to hide himself in shame. Sin will rob you of your dignity. Sin will promise pleasure and give it to you for a moment, and then the pain begins. Sin is at first pleasure, then it is pain. First, it's alluring, and then you can't escape it. Just as the children of Israel were bound in slavery to the Egyptians, so the sinner today is bound in slavery to the kingdom of darkness through the action of sin. And everything about your humanity that should be dignified with God's divine nature is robbed of that heavenly spark. And you know deep within that something is not right. Your conscience is to your mind what pain is to your body. And deep down inside you know somehow, some way you violated some holy standard. Sin robs you of dignity. Sin steals your peace. In Isaiah chapter 53 verse 5, the scripture declares... That the chastisement of our peace was upon him. Now, why did he have to suffer for our peace? Because sin robs you of peace. If you lack peace in your life, I promise you, ultimately, though other things may contribute to it, ultimately, it's coming about as a result of sin. Sin steals your joy. Romans chapter 14, verse 17 tells us that the kingdom of God is righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Spirit. Well, if I'm not living in the kingdom of God, I can't truly know joy. Sure, the world has joy. You've heard it said that the world has happiness and the church has joy. Joy and happiness mean the same exact thing. The difference is the joy of the believer, the one who's trusted in Christ, is rooted in in Christ himself. Nothing can outlast its source. So if you find joy in money and cars and things and people, your joy diminishes over time. But when you learn to find joy in who he is, he's eternity itself. And that joy is everlasting. If you don't think you're a slave to sin, just try to stop. If you don't think you're a slave to sin, just try to stop. It's a bondage. Sin robs you of love. Matthew 24, 12 says, sin will be rampant everywhere. And the love of many will grow cold. Where sin is rampant, Love grows cold. All sin is selfishness. All acts of love are selfless. So sin destroys your life. Sin removes the dignity. Sin steals your peace. Sin steals your joy. Sin steals your love. Sin brings death. It's a cancer of the soul. Sin, quite simply, is wrongdoing, doing against the holy nature of God. Now, you may be sitting in this place hearing what I'm saying or watching online. Only the Holy Spirit can give you the desire to be rid of sin. So if you're hearing what I'm saying, and something in you says, I want sin removed from my life. And God is calling you. Hebrews chapter 9, verses 13 and 14 say this. Under the old system, the blood of goats and bulls and the ashes of a heifer could cleanse people's bodies from ceremonial impurity. Just think how much more the blood of Christ will purify our consciences from sinful deeds, so that we can worship the living God. 
For by the power of the eternal spirit, Christ offered himself to God as a perfect sacrifice for our sins. Hebrews 9.22 says, In fact, according to the law of Moses, nearly everything was purified with blood. For without the shedding of blood, there is no forgiveness. So here we're caught in this trap of sin. We're bound. We're caged. We're chained. And by ourselves, we can do nothing to escape the bondage that is sin. By ourselves, we can do nothing to escape that nature, those desires. By ourselves, we cannot live how God designed us to live. Why? Because we've been enslaved. We're living according to the kingdom of darkness. We're living according to those laws and those rules, following our own hearts, following our selfish desires, following that which we crave. In this flesh. But Jesus came. To this earth. The son of the living God. And this is the gospel. Jesus the son of God. Came to earth. Lived a perfect. Sinless life. Spotless. Not one mistake. And he was crucified taking upon himself the punishment for our sins. God raised him again from the dead on the third day to show who he really was. You see, with his crucifixion, God proved the love of Christ. With his resurrection, God proved the truth of the Christ. We don't serve a dead Savior. We serve the living God. And that same Jesus that you've heard so much about, that some, same Jesus that likely you've grown up in church hearing about, wants to meet you and cleanse you. For that sin-stained life to be purified, it takes immense power. What can remove that guilt? What can remove that shame? What can remove that chaos in the mind? Only one thing. The blood of Jesus. What can wash away my sins? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can make me whole again? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. The gospel is simply this. Jesus will give you his eternal life in exchange for your temporary one. Please hear what I'm saying. Jesus will give you his eternal life in exchange for your temporary one. If you're tired of living in slavery to the kingdom of darkness, if you're tired of being frustrated with yourself, if you're tired of the anger, if you're tired of the guilt, if you're tired of the shame, if you're tired of that emotional pain deep within that you can't quite identify the source of, if you're tired of living without purpose, you can be set free. I want you right now to think about the worst thing you've ever done. That thing in your mind that gnaws away at you. That thing that robs you of sleep. That reason you can't look your spouse in the eye for too long. That reason you feel like you can't be a good parent to your child. That reason you have an overwhelming sense that something needs to change. Think of the worst thing you've ever done. 
The scripture says that God's hand is not too short, that it cannot save. That means no matter how deep, how dark, how perverse, how evil, how selfish your sins are, the blood of Jesus can wash you clean and give you a new beginning. The blood of Jesus is so powerful that it can take the heart of the sinner, take the heart of the one who feels bound, take the heart of the one who's been trained under darkness, and he can transform that heart. He can give you a new heart. He can give you a fresh start. He can give you a new beginning. For the scripture declares that if anyone be in Christ, that person is a new creation. And he can make you new. No, my friend, I'm not promising you that everything in this life will be perfect. In fact, many things will likely get worse for you when you start to follow Jesus, if I'm just being honest. I'm just being honest with you. People, people, the way the things are going in the world right now, people will hate you because you follow Jesus. Let them call me a bigot. I'm forgiven. Let, let, let man reject me. God accepts me. Your family may make fun of you. They might get saved too. Some of your friends will think you're weird. They'll leave you. They'll try to convince you you're in a cult. They'll mock you. They'll tell you, oh, give it some time. You'll be back to your old self in a matter of this many weeks. Maybe you've tried it before. Some will say, well, there you go again. The enemy will attack. Temptation will get stronger. You'll sense this war within yourself fighting this other you that you no longer identify with. You'll be hated of men, persecuted, rejected by society. But my friend, you'll have peace in your heart. You'll have joy unspeakable. You'll have love overflowing. You'll have grace that gives you the strength to stand under anything. And you'll live knowing your sins are forgiven. You're right with God. And it gets better. Not only does he forgive you of all your sins here on this earth, not only does he wipe your slate clean, give you a brand new start, this same Jesus also said, behold, I go to prepare a place for you. Meaning there's a day that's coming. When you'll stand before him. And because you switch places with Jesus, when God looks at the cross, he'll see all your sin. But when he sees you standing there on that day of judgment, he's going to see the righteousness of Christ, and you'll hear those words, well done, my good and faithful servant. Enter now into the joy of the Lord. But you have to humble yourself. Now, this is, this is the difficult part for many have to humble yourself. You'll have to come to him and say, God, I hear that you forgive sinners. I have so many sins. God, I, I hear that you pardon the debt those who come to you and ask. I'll tell you what keeps people out of heaven. It's not their sin. Jesus took care of that. What keeps people out of heaven is their pride. God resists the proud, but gives grace to the humble. Tonight, I'm pleading with you to humble yourself before the mighty hand of God, and He will raise you.
In a moment, I'm going to ask you to come forward, and I'm going to lead you in a prayer. But please understand something. And I say this every time because I never want it to be misunderstood. You can search the whole Bible, Genesis all the way to Revelation. You'll never once find in the Bible the sinner's prayer. You will not find the sinner's prayer. What you will find are sinners who pray. The sinner's prayer is not some special set of magic words. In fact, you look through the scripture and you see all sorts of ways to respond. Believe, confess, turn to, repent. There's like seven different ways the Bible talks about that one can turn to God and be saved. The takeaway is simple. All of those have one common denominator that is humbling yourself before God and putting your trust in what he's doing. And if the mechanism that you use to do that is a prayer, so be it. But this prayer is not going to do anything for you if it's not truly something that you're communicating to our Heavenly Father. But I'll tell you this. If you truly turn from your sin, put your faith in Jesus, that heavy baggage you've been carrying, he'll take it off your shoulder. Jesus said, come to me, all of you who are weary and heavy laden. Come to me, all of you who carry those burdens of life. And I'll give you rest. My yoke is easy, meaning my teachings, my ways of going about things, it's easy. And my burden is, is light. You want that? you have a decision to make. In a moment, I'm going to call for those who want to receive Christ as their Savior to stand. In a moment, I will. But don't stand because other people are standing. Don't sit there looking to your group, waiting to see who will come. It's a decision you make all your own. But if you're ready to do that, to turn from your sin, you want to be washed by the blood of Jesus. And I want you to do something for me. More importantly, I want you to do something for the Lord. I want you to right now stand up to your feet if you're ready to surrender. Stand up to your feet. You're ready to surrender your life to him. God bless you, sir. It's a true response. God bless you. give you a moment you know as preachers it's not our job to pressure people but I don't want to close that door because only the Holy Spirit can draw you and I can't promise you you'll get another opportunity that's not a scare tactic that's the truth you're in this place and you know you should be standing everyone pray in the Holy Ghost just for like 30 seconds please Holy Spirit, draw all men unto Jesus. Draw them by your Spirit, I pray. Are you ready to respond to that? Have your sins forgiven. Give your life to the Lord. I want you right now, stand up. You know you should be standing. Stand up. Don't hesitate. Don't think about what others are going to think about you. I see this woman's trembling under God's power right now. I think a good portion of you last night how many received the Lord last light night let me see your hand all over the room God bless you they're going to help their sister stand here and we'll believe God to heal you too hey Patrick can we get a chair for that woman who's about to come please the rest of you who are standing please come forward Please come forward. And you can sit her right there. 
What's wrong with you as far as your physical body goes? Yeah. You can't feel your feet? We're going to believe Jesus to heal you tonight. Now once more, this one will be even tougher to respond to. You know you should be standing here with these people. I'll tell you this, you can do one of two things tonight. Either you can leave this place rejecting this message, rejecting the Lord, really. And you're going to leave this place burdened. You're going to get in your car. You're going to drive home tonight. You're going to rest your head on your pillow. And all you're going to be doing is wishing that you would have responded to this call. Tossing and turning, saying, why didn't I respond to the call? Knowing the terror of the Lord, we persuade men, Paul the Apostle wrote. Or, you can respond to Jesus. Embrace his lordship in your life. Turn to him. Repent of your sins. And you leave this place with that burden lifted off your shoulders. And you're going to go lay your head on your pillow tonight with a smile on your face. You'll be saying to yourself, I'm so glad I went up there. Because you're going to have new love in your heart, peace in your heart, joy in your heart. And your sins will be forgiven. So I want to give one more opportunity. If you know you should be up here and you don't want to miss it. And I want to give you an opportunity to come. Just come out of your seat right now and come and join us down here at this altar. I know that I know that I know that the Holy Spirit is pulling on someone's heart right now. I know. Don't come up here if he's not pulling on you. It's not an emotional thing, but you know something inside of you just knows. And what you're doing right now is you're debating with yourself, he can't be talking about me. That's how you know it's you. No, that's you. And we're not going to look at you and be angry with you or be ashamed of what you're doing. We're going to rejoice with you. But you know you should be up here. You want to come. God bless you, the whole family here. <laughs> I love the Holy Spirit. He told me, you just sighed a sigh of relief because you thought I'd be done. <laughs> If that was you, they came up here and went, oh, okay, he's going to leave us alone now. Then that's you who should be up here. And I know that I know that I know that I know that I know in my spirit, the Holy Spirit is drawing one other, at least one other. If that's you, I promise you, if you respond to the Holy Spirit, he'll do the work. He will do the work. But I'm not going to take much longer this window of opportunity is closing. If that's you, one more time, I'll give you an opportunity to stand and join us. If that's you, just stand and come join us. You online who are giving your life to the Lord, I have a different challenge for you coming in just a minute. Because Jesus said, if you confess me before men, I'll confess you before my Father who's in heaven. If you deny me before men, I'll deny you before my Father who's in heaven. Now those of you down here, please understand this is not the end of the road. I'm not going to give you a little special prayer you repeat and then go live the way you want. That's not how this works. Look at this as the ramp for takeoff. It's simply the beginning. But you have to truly surrender to Jesus. Truly. Give him your life. Otherwise, this was just a religious act. Sir? Sir? Is this your wife and daughter? Your fiance? Are you ready to give your life to Jesus? It's going to cost you. People will turn on you. It's not easy. In fact, the enemy will cause turmoil just to try to get you to quit, and God will use trials to shape your character. You'll have to forsake all. All. Do you want that?
There are things in life. How old are you? 10, and you're old enough to understand what I'm saying. There are things in this life, in this world that you will never get to experience. You will be mocked. You will be made fun of. But I promise you, what you give up in this world is nothing compared to what you gain in Christ. Are you going to follow him? Everything. All of it. Sir, the day may come when you have to actually give your life for the gospel. Are you ready to lay down your life for Jesus? It will cost you everything. There are some relationships that God will sever. Even ones that seem good for you. Because we cannot be yoked with the world, meaning joined with the world. Is there anyone that you would put in front of Jesus? You do this, Jesus comes before your family. It's not family, God, and then yourself. It's God first. They may be upset with some decisions you make. Saying, that's not how we do things. But it's Jesus before family. Forsaking all. All. Are you ready to release the anger in your heart? Pardon? Good. Good. Follow Jesus. You have to be ready to release anger too. Unforgiveness. You're forsaking all today. And no matter what comes your way, it's Jesus. You who are down here, please lift your hands. If you're able, you don't have to. I know you're holding the baby. It's just a symbol of what we're doing. Eyes closed. Church, pray with me now. As I lead these here to Jesus himself, repeat this prayer after me. Say, dear Jesus, I come before you today, say it out loud, as a sinner. I admit I have sinned. I admit I've done wrong. Lord, Jesus, forgive me. Change me. Use me. I believe. You are the Son of God, the only way, the only one true God. I believe you died on the cross for my sins. I believe you rose again from the dead. Be my Lord, be my God, be my Savior. Today, I turn from sin, and I turn to you. Save me. Save me. Save me. I trust you, and I declare, today, now and forever, I am born again. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen, amen, amen.
What's your name, buddy? What's your name? Pardon? Brandon? You're 10? Do you want God to use your life? Lift your hands. Newly saved, let's fill him with the Holy Ghost. Father, let your power come on him now. Father, I pray that the Holy Spirit would come from on high and touch him even now. Oh, wow. There's such an anointing here. Everyone pray for him that God use his life. <laughs> wow. Lord, fill him to overflowing. Make him a preacher, Lord. Make him a preacher of the gospel. He gave two thumbs up to that. Make him a preacher of the gospel. And fill him with your power even now. Lord, Holy Spirit, just for me, please, my friend. I love the Holy Spirit. Touch him the same way you touched me when I was 11, Lord. Touch him the same way you touched me. Father, let that power go through his body right now. There's like an electricity on him. You see this guy's coming on him? That's the same thing that happened. I was, I was trembling in God's presence like this. Brendan, that's the power of God. Just receive it, my friend. Just receive it. It's, it's all over you. Whew. I can sense it. Like, it's, like a, it's like a jolting between us. How you guys sing this on him? Hey, what are you feeling on you? Uh, shaking. <laughs> I'll tell you, he has no idea what's coming to him. You have no idea. <laughs> this is the power of God, my friend. Is this interesting or what? How else would you describe it other than shaking? People rarely do, my friend. People rarely do. <laughs> Don't be nervous. <laughs> He's, he doesn't know what to do with this. I mean, look at his body right now, guys. This is someone who just received the Lord. That's the power of God. Hey, I, I, I don't know why. I feel like I should pray God give him a healing ministry. Do you know what that means? Okay, lift your hands. Everyone stretch your hands forward. Pray for him. And please understand that this is a commitment too. It means you say, God... I want you to do with my, with my life whatever you want. Lift your hands for a second. Father, Brendan, right? Give Brendan a healing ministry and let your power flow through him tonight. Take a portion of what's here, a portion, Lord, according to his faith, according to his faith, and place it on him now. Pray for him, church. It's that same healing grace. <laughs> Receive it now. You can't rush these things, guys. You can't rush these things. It's a holy moment. Do you guys know him? You two here? I see you crying as you look at what God's doing for him. That's why I asked. It wasn't a word of knowledge thing. What? You're the who? Okay, you're the mom. Come here, mom. Look at your son. I was going to say, this is your prayer being answered. It's your prayer being answered. One of my favorite facial expressions to see is just bewilderment, like, what is happening to me? 
this is your daughter. God bless her. God's going to use you, my brother. He's going to use you. He's going to use all of you. Church, can we take a moment to welcome the new family here? God bless you all. seated. Please take your seats. And now, Lord, we pray you back your word with signs following. How many were healed last night who did not get to testify? Can I see your hand? We had like a list of you guys. It's like a whole different crowd tonight. I think it's like a, I see like 90% new faces. It's almost like the, like different showings at a theater. One group came in and then we got a whole different one. Britain, do we have any of them here tonight? Because we'll need them in a moment. But I want to talk to you just for a second about God's healing touch. Music is wonderful. And I can show you scriptures on how music brings about or helps to usher in, or at least accentuates a move of God. I can show you verses like that. But the healing doesn't come because of the music. There's faith in the room, an expectation, some excitement even. The excitement might come from the lighting, the fact that people are watching, all around the world. But only the Holy Spirit can produce faith. Sound team does a wonderful job. But sound system or not, God's healing power is still God's healing power. Strip away everything. And I can tell you honestly, there's no technique to apply. There's no system to implement. There's no strategy or maneuver. People ask me, what's the secret? What's the secret? What's the secret? What's the secret? What did they teach you? 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 They want to know what I learned from certain people who walked in certain realms. if I have a special schedule. No. If you want to know what I'm doing before a service, I'm usually taking a nap. Just being real with you. I could excite the crowd. Probably the easiest form of preaching is yelling and screaming and getting people excited. Doesn't mean it's not anointed. It's very anointed. We need it. Some of us need to be screamed at. Sometimes I'll preach like that. I get really excited about a topic. But that excitement doesn't produce power, nor does my conversational delivery. I could scream at you. I could whisper at you. It's the same healing power. My friend, truly is just his healing power. And you need to understand that he is with us. He is always with us. You say, why David? Why then the lights? Why then the music? Why then the setting of the atmosphere? The setting of the atmosphere is not so God can move. It's so you can pay attention. It's not like God is waiting for the perfect note. Sometimes the Spirit will lead me along a certain note. But if his finger should slip, God won't withhold the miracle. The usher should drop some pens back there. God is still moving. It's simple faith, a 
upon a simple promise. Forgives all my sins and heals all my iniquities. Heals all my disease. Heals everything about me that's not of his nature. It's a matter of touching him. I can stand on a platform, and if you know me, sometimes it's like a gentle breeze, and other times it's like a wind. Sometimes I feel like I'm basking in a warmth. Other times I feel like I'm being electrocuted and I'm screaming at everyone. But whatever God does tonight, it's the same Jesus. There was a man who came to one of our services standing in a prayer line. He was believing God to open his left ear. He was deaf in his left ear for several years. And I'm laying hands on the sick, pressing my hand on their heads, messing up their hairstyles, believing God. Persisting, striving, believing. Matthew 7, 7, yes. Seek, knock, ask. But I was so amazed. This is one of the first times it happened like this. is in San Diego, California. I'm looking at the person I'm praying for. And in my peripheral vision, I see a guy doing this. Just bewildered. And when he finally comes up for prayer, I said, what do you need healing for? He says, I don't need healing. I said, what are you doing in the line? He said, well, I was believing for God to open my left ear. And before I even got on the platform to receive prayer, suddenly my ear popped and the speaker on my left side was really, really, really loud. I said, you mean Jesus healed you while you were standing in line? He said, yes. It was simply the healing power of Jesus. Nobody applied anything. There was a woman here last night. I don't know if she's here tonight. But it was, I believe, her grandson who had to point out to her, Grandma, your swelling and bruising is gone on her foot. She came to the back afterwards when we were greeting people. She showed me, look. I said, what am I looking at? I'm thinking, she's just showing me. And she explained that there was swelling and bruising. She didn't even know it was gone until they were walking out in the foyer. And her grandson said, look, your swelling and your bruising is gone. Can't tell you how many times I've had people come to services with diseases of all kinds and they go home and find they've been healed. They didn't even bother to check. Their faith was so minimal. Sometimes I'm like that man, Lord, I believe, but help my unbelief. It's a little girl who came, Orange, California. She was born with crooked legs. You can see the before and after photo on my Instagram. It's not a social media plug, but you can see it there. She came believing that God would heal her legs. The family arrived, and they couldn't even get a seat. They had to stand way in the back. I believe they finally made some way for them to sit down in the back, but it was one of those services. People on the floors, people in the overflow, people in the foyer, people lined up around the building still unable to get in. Mom, because of that press of the crowd, was a little discouraged, but the little girl said, Mom, it's okay. We don't have to be up front for Jesus to heal me. She left that service. Nothing happened for her in that service. They're driving on the way home. (laughs) And the little girl says, Mom, do you hear that? She said, No, sweetie, I don't. She said, Something is popping like popcorn. It wasn't until the morning that they realized that her legs had completely straightened out. The Lord healed her in the car on the way home. Anaheim, California, a woman came straight from the hospital. She never really explained thoroughly exactly what was wrong, but I saw on her wrist the hospital um, the hospital tag. On her wrist, the band. And she had come straight from the hospital. She just checked out. 
Her, her left hand was paralyzed. No feeling, no movement. It was dead weight at her side. I wasn't even necessarily preaching on healing. She stands up and starts to do this. Look, 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 look. I said, it's your hand. She's weeping. Her family's weeping. They just came from the hospital with her. They said the doctors told her that hand would be paralyzed with no feeling or movement for the rest of her life. And there she was moving that hand. Kansas City, Kansas. A woman wheels her husband to the front because of a stroke paralyzed entirely on his left side. Hadn't walked, taken a step in years. They came up before the service even started. She wheeled him up and looked at me. And in my religious thinking, we do that sometimes. I said, well, it's not the prayer time yet. So I said, well, why don't you guys, God bless you, take your seat. We'll pray right now. After, during, and I, I would have prayed for them. But then the Holy Spirit said, pray for him now. So I said, actually, I'm being corrected here. Bring, bring him back up. She wheels him up. As I'm stepping down from the platform, I hear myself saying, you're going to be healed right now. And I'm thinking, okay, that better have been God. By faith, removed the placeholders for his feet in the wheelchair. Grabbed him by the hands and yanked him up. Church, that man began to walk for the first time in years. It was God's healing power. Look at the scriptures. How did Jesus heal the centurion servant? With the word. How did Jesus heal the dead girl? He laid his hands on her. She didn't have faith. Where was the faith of Jairus' daughter? There was another time when Jesus spit in mud and put it in a guy's eyes. Why? I don't know. I've heard scholars try to explain it, but nobody really knows why. But that's what he did, and it worked. The woman with the issue of blood comes up behind him. Jesus didn't even know he was healing her. <laughs> Jesus didn't even know. But she touched him in that moment, and he knew healing power had gone out, but he said, who touched me? Who touched me? Now, of course, we know he knew, but he in his sovereignty in that moment, allowed himself to not know. Mysteries of heaven, right? So the woman touches him in faith. He spits in a blind man's eyes. He sends forth the word. He raises the dead. He laid hands on the sick. He spoke to the sick. He put mud on the sick. He sent his disciples to lay hands on the sick. In whatever way God does it, he can do it. And so tonight, as we worship Jesus, as we honor his name, I want you to forget about your sickness. I want you to forget about your pain. And I want you to just lift your hands, and we're going to worship him in a moment. And as we worship him, I'm just going to wait until the Holy Spirit tells me that the moment is just right. Miss Coleman used to say that when Jesus becomes more real to you than your sickness, you'll be healed. And it's in worship that that happens. Any moment can be your miracle moment. Don't wait for the future. Don't tell yourself that someday it will happen. Believe for it now. Isn't that so much easier? Yeah, I believe one day. But when is one day? You may look around the room and say, well, the building looked different in my mind, or I looked a little older, or I was feeling more euphoric. Doesn't matter. We're going to worship him tonight. And God's healing power is going to descend on this room. And the sick will be made whole in the name of Jesus. So stand with me all across this room. I want you to abandon yourself as you're led by the Holy Spirit in worship. Just as the Spirit leads you, open your mouth. And just speak as the Spirit leads you. If he leads you to say songs of adoration, then just say them. If he leads you to pray in the Holy Ghost, pray in the Holy Ghost. But whatever you do, just adore Jesus right now. We're just adoring Jesus. We're not asking right now. We're just adoring Him. Lift your hands, pray in the Holy Ghost. Lift your hands, pray in the Holy Ghost. Kondo robo bo 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 senter yende rebe be 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 senter. Kende rebe be 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 si. 
You online, if you receive the Lord today, I want you to write two simple words. Write the words born again in the comment section. And you also believe for your healing. Because this tangible touch of the Holy Spirit's power is available to move through that camera right to where you're watching in Jesus' name. Jesus, we love you. And we lavish our praise upon you. Jesus, we adore you. You are good, you are kind, you are merciful, you are gracious, you are glorious, you are wonderful, you are powerful. Come on, church, just let the Holy Spirit worship through you. Become lost in that act of worship. Abandon yourself and seek Him. Come join me up here, my friend, and just lead worship as the Spirit leads you. And again, I want everybody watching online and everybody here in person, just worship Jesus. Don't worry about anything else right now. Just lift your hands and worship Him. Send it in. 
you've saved today and thank you for your presence we just want to love you Lord oh church just allow yourself to be raptured by the Holy Ghost into the glorious presence of Jesus ascend now to the heights of glory leaving behind the things of this world leaving behind the cares weigh on your mind. Turn to him now and allow him. Allow him to fill you with himself. We honor you, the King. With your grace and your elegance, we honor you.
Hallelujah. Once more, every voice lifted, sing it again. here church sing out hallelujah
You're the lamb upon the throne, and unto you we lift our voice in praise. You're the lamb upon the throne, for you are glorious, Steve. For you are glorious and worthy to be praised. You're the Lamb upon the throne. And unto you we lift our voice in praise. You're the Lamb. your suffering. He sees your pain. And he is able to make you completely whole. The power is present to heal.
Touch your people as they worship, Lord. Let them encounter the presence and the power of the Holy Spirit in a way they've never known. Take them deeper than they've ever gone. Welcome them to the mountaintop that they might leave that sickness in the valley. anointing break the power of sickness over this room in the name of Jesus we declare that Jesus is Lord in Florida Jesus is Lord in Florida place your hand on your sickness now quickly 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 it's I'm telling you I, I, I'm, even the way I'm seeing things right now, the vision, my vision is shifted. I, I can't explain it completely, but there is something different about the room now, and that's how I know the winds have changed. Place your hands on your sickness now and begin to rebuke that sickness. Pray with me. Pray in the Holy Ghost and begin rebuking that sickness now. <laughs> In the name of Jesus, I rebuke arthritis. In the name of Jesus, I rebuke paralysis and skin disease and cancer and sicknesses and pains of all kinds. Shoulders be healed, arms be healed, legs be healed. Brains be healed, eyes be healed, ears be healed. Skeletal systems, correct yourself in the name of Jesus. In the presence of the King, I command that nervous system to stand at attention and obey. 
By the authority of Christ, I command every bone to be set straight, every nerve to come alive in the name of Jesus. Skin disease, go, go, go. Tumors, go, go, go. I command eyes to see with perfect clarity. I command mouths to speak. Come out of that wheelchair in the name of Jesus. Drop those crutches in the name of Jesus. By faith, abandon that walker in the name of Jesus. I command asthma, be healed. Problems with hearing, be healed. I command problems with nasal congestion, be healed. Lungs, be healed. Hearts, be healed. Blood, be healed. Every organ must obey. Every ligament must obey. Every part of every body must obey. Sickness, you have been served and noticed by decree of the king. You must go. You have no right on their body in the name of Jesus. And I command that healing power to flow across this room. Lift your hands. Receive your healing. There's a river of healing. Jump into that river. Hallelujah. opened I give you the praise Jesus for what you're doing someone to my left your ear just opened thank you Jesus there's a mouth sore over in the middle section someone with a mouth sore you're being made whole a gentleman here came in with the back injury God is healing you I thank you Jesus lungs are being healed right now somebody's knees are being healed I thank you Lord somebody there's paralysis in one part of your hand that's being healed right now I thank you Jesus Guys, there are miracles happening right now. Lift your hands, claim it, claim it, claim it, claim it. Ask Him to heal you, it's happening. It's happening, it's happening, it's happening. Miracles are happening all across this room. Thank you, Jesus, thank you, Jesus. Wow, we give you glory, Lord. We give you glory for the power that's present. Now, what I want you to do, you were believing for a healing. Quickly begin to test yourselves. Now, step out in faith. Come on. Begin to test yourselves. If you couldn't step a certain way, start stepping. If you couldn't move your neck or your hands or your, your eyes maybe got a little blurry with your glasses on. If you take them off, they'll be clear. I'm telling you, test your ear. Look at your skin. Check for the tumor. Check for the pain. God has done it. God has done it. And if you'll go by faith to check it, I believe the Lord will do it. Wow, there's power here. How many of you wave at me if God healed you? Wave at me, wave at me. Nice and big, nice and big, all across the room. We need to give Jesus a hand of praise for that. Oh. Okay. If you've been healed, God healed you right now. What I want you to do, you waved at me. Even if you got healed last night, you were part of that long line that wasn't able to testify. 
if God healed you, I need you to do me a favor. And it's not just a favor for me, it's a favor for people watching all over the world too. You need to tell the world what Jesus has done for you. So if you've been healed, I want you right now, don't hesitate, get out of your seat, come on. And come stand over here where they're waving at you. Come, 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 come quickly. Come on, get out of your seat. Get out of your seat, get out of your seat. If God healed you, get out of your seat, come and testify. You watching online, if the Lord healed you, I want you to begin to write it in the comment section what Jesus is healing you from, what he's done in your body. In fact, there's somebody here, you may not even realize you were healed, but there's a skin disease, like a, like a psoriasis of sorts. If you check for that sickness, you're gonna find that it's gone. You're gonna find that your skin has been made whole. I know it by the Spirit. Can we give the Lord glory for these miracles that he's done? You may be seated in the presence of the Holy Spirit. You can keep that for now, Patrick. I think my light is on. Don't drain my battery. Thank you. I'll need that later to read some comments from our YouTube pals. Don't you just love the presence of the Holy Spirit? I said, don't you just love the presence of the Holy Spirit? What a beautiful, beautiful presence of God here this evening. And these right now are preparing to testify. My team is getting their stories together. And they'll actually be given, after they testify, they'll be given a card. We're starting to follow up now with people who are healed. And it's a whole segment we're doing. But we're going to be doing this testimony segment, getting their stories and following up. We have many coming soon because the miracles that happen are tremendous. And we want to tell the world about it. So, uh, Ruben, real quick, where, where was my friend? I told you to save three seats for my friend. I'm looking in the front section because I don't see him anywhere. He's in the back. Where is he? TJ, my TJ, my friend, would you come and just you and is, can can they take some seats in the front? I just remembered I had a, a guest and I thought you would have sat them. Sorry guys, a little bit of uh, logistics here. The Holy Spirit. This is not just me doing this. The Holy Spirit honors the mantles on people's lives. So you could just bring him if he, if, he, if his family wants to stay. TJ, my friend, would you come? Okay, Ruben, what happened here? David, I have Lori here. 15 years ago, she ruptured her disc in an, in an accident where she was teaching her son how to do a cartwheel. So she ruptured her disc 15 years ago, and she has had constant pain since. She said the past year, it's been excruciating. She hasn't been able to sit for periods of time, stand, uh, you name it. Nothing has been able to function properly in her back. And she said tonight, she was believing for her healing, and she said she felt the pain leave off her body when she were praying over the congregation. But I heard the Lord say, Lori, you're healed. So I believe him that he's doing it. I, I ruptured it 15 years ago, but recently in this last year, I injured it again. Teaching my Jesus healed her in the name of Jesus. Stretch your hands toward her. And could we get maybe Matthew or Britton up here with, um, with Patrick, please? And then someone else helping with that line. Britton, you come. Matthew, help with that. And, and what, what did you say you injured it doing? I have. I re-injured it teaching my teenagers, my son, how to do a cartwheel. And how long ago was that? That was in uh, February. Go ahead, and, and, and what was the movement you could not do without pain before? I couldn't run, and like if I stand Do like a little lap around here this way. Now watch the wires. And then help her up on the platform, gentlemen. Can we give the Lord a hand of praise for this? Isn't Jesus awesome? Thank you, Jesus, for your anointing that touched her and healed her. One more time, give him a shout of praise. Now, you actually told me a story in the lobby yesterday when we were shaking hands with people. Now, it's, it's your aunt, your grandma? Who? My aunt. My great aunt. Tell them real quickly what happened. My great aunt got her vaccination after being stuck at home for a year with um, fear of COVID. And she got the vaccination and within 30 minutes had a massive stroke and was declared brain dead. She had a severe brain bleed. And we were watching, my mom called and said, you need to pray, you need to pray, they're gonna disconnect life support. And so I was watching one of your healing uh, ministries and it was like from a year before. And uh, it was for, um, you, you preached on the healing of the woman with the issue of blood. And uh, we were praying and worshiping 
and we felt the Holy Spirit come in the room with us while we were praying for her. And you said, there's someone with fluid on the brain. And then you said, we're stepping into the rivers of healing right now. And I stomped my feet to make a step of faith. And the next day when they went to disconnect her, they called me and they said, Lori, she sat up in bed and said she's hungry and she's thirsty and her brain was okay. She had all her cognitive functions. She could walk, she could stand, she was okay. God raised her. He's a miracle working God, church. He's a miracle working God. Well, God bless you. Go rejoicing in your healing. I love stories like that. And I, 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 some of the best stories I'm told are when I'm, I'm meeting all of our partners, supporters, and friends in the lobby. That's why I'm glad I don't just do the escape out the back door. I like to hear people's stories. Ruben, what happened? Diga, I have Morgan here. For the past couple of weeks, she has developed this pain on her right shoulder, which she believes stems from stress and anxiety. She said the pain comes and goes. And when you told the people to go ahead and pray, she started believing for her healing. And she said she felt this pressure come upon her and it just released. She's getting set free right now. Lord, I rebuke it in the name of Jesus. Lord, I rebuke it in the name of Jesus. Let peace come upon her now. Peace come upon her now. Pick her up. God's doing something in you. But it's not just your physical healing. There's also, he's healing your mind right now. And he's healing your heart. And this is the presence of Jesus. And it's in his presence that there is healing for the whole being, for the whole being, church. That is what Jesus came to do. Destroy the works of the devil. Let's take a moment, stretch your hands and pray for her. We're gonna ask the Lord to do something in her. Lord, set her free and use her for your glory in the name of Jesus. Pick her up for a second. He's heard your heart's cry. The Lord is gonna touch your family. He's gonna touch your family. And there's going to be peace that comes upon them, the family. That's what he just spoke to me. And he's going to use you in part through your prayers to do it. Now go by faith believing it in Jesus' name. Reuben, what's happening over here? David, I have Brandon here who came believing for his miracle tonight. For the past 15 years, he's been dealing with hearing loss. 15 years ago, he lost his hearing. It just came up over him. He has no idea what caused it. It just happened over time. And he said he came believing for his, for his healing. His hearing has come back. He said it's been coming back. He said he's able to hear properly now. Out of which ear? Both ears. And you have no idea what caused this? No, they don't know at all. They think, they think it was a nerve deterioration, but it just it went down to about 40 decibel loss and really rapidly. But ever since then, it stayed there. And, uh, and what happened tonight as you were worshiping? I was just believing that I feel that it's going to happen right now. I've already believed it's been prayed for, it's been healed. It was healed when 2,000 years ago. And so right now it's about to manifest. It's, it's manifested. And so the Lord healed you while you were worshiping. Lord, I pray you use this man for your glory. Thank you, Lord, for the anointing of the Holy Spirit. He's standing with us right now. The Holy Spirit, I often refer to as my friend. He's my companion, and you know what I'm talking about. He's here today. Lord, I thank you. <gasps> whoa, 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 whoa. When I hear stories about this, I mean, can you imagine having to deal with that? And the fear and the anxiety that would come with that. Today, he's standing here telling us that Jesus opened his ears. We cry holy, Steve. We cry holy, on your life. 
call of God is on your life. I can tell this woman knows you because she is weeping before the Lord. As I told that other woman about that boy, it's your prayers, it's your prayers. It's your prayers. Bring her up here for a second. Close your eyes, lift your hands. Close your eyes and lift your hands. Where are you, Lord? There was a day I received impartation. And the song that was playing was holy, holy, holy. Are you, Lord? His presence is here. Touch this family, Lord, and use them. If you want that, you lift your hands too. Ask him to fill you. Thank you, Jesus. You go rejoicing in what you've declared the Lord has done for you. Ruben, what happened? Dig, I have Davidson here. In the beginning of the year, he was in an incident where he injured his right hamstring and his knee. He said he's been in pain ever since. It was due to a football injury. And he says he's been limping ever since then. He's been in pain. He hasn't been able to move it properly. Today, he believed for his healing. And when you when you order the congregation to go ahead and test out and begin to move parts of their body that they weren't able to do so before, he began to move his leg and he said he gained full sense of motion and the pain left. So how far was the movement beforehand? I was moving it like right about here. I would feel it hurt really bad. You would feel it hurt right about there. Show them again, where would it hurt? Right here. And what can you do now? And how long had you been suffering with that injury? Since January. Since January. This is the healing power of God. What was it like as you were worshiping the Lord? What happened? Uh, I felt a heating sensation in my right leg. You know, people describe that a lot, like a fire or a heat. I don't often say that because I want them to have that experience on their own. But that heat, that sensation, that's the fire of the Holy Spirit making you whole, brother. That's the fire of the Holy Spirit making you whole. <laughs> I don't know what's up with tonight, but there are a lot of preachers coming on this platform. Not just a preacher. Yes, a preacher. Yes, a preacher. Yes, a preacher. But not just the preaching. You think you're just good at reading people. That's a prophetic gift that God's placing on you, brother. Get ready, God's activating it. Wow. There's so much destiny here in this place tonight. Now you go rejoicing and see if you can go try out again and see if you can get back on the team, my brother. God bless you. Go rejoicing. What happened here, Rube? David, I have Malik here. A year ago, he tore his ACL. Ever since then, he has had pain. He hasn't been able to move his knee properly. He said he was testing it out even in the line as well still he said when you told the audience to go ahead and believe in faith begin to move the part of your body you weren't able to move before he began to move his left knee he said I was able to move it more than I was before he said the pain was coming off him as he was doing that and you just stepped out in faith and to see what the Lord would do yes like I always feel like a block that's does this remind me of my injury so when you say step out on faith I didn't feel like block like holding me back anymore I didn't feel the block anymore. and the pain is gone the pain in your left knee is gone. Yeah. Move it again. You couldn't do that before without pain? Like, yeah, I can do it, but like, I feel like a, an ache in my knee, but I don't feel that ache no more. You restored your knee. And what did it... Pray in the Holy Ghost a second. Jesus.
I'm going to tell him something personal by the Spirit. So I'm going to go off of mic for a second. But don't disengage because of that. Start praying. praying in the Holy Ghost right now. Okay. Go rejoicing, brother. You can walk down those stairs, I'm sure, by yourself now. <laughs> David, I have Monica here. You know what I noticed, Ruben? You go back and forth between calling me David, then Diga, then David, then Diga. Uh, <laughs> Diga. There you go, pick one. <laughs> Diga, I have Monica here. Four you years, got saved tonight. Uh, four years now has had a thyroid issue. It's hurt her throat. When swallowing, it would hurt. Saliva, anything, it would hurt. She said uh, she's had that for four years now. She came believing for her healing. And when you instructed the audience to go ahead and pray, she was believing for her miracle. At that moment, she was praying. She said she felt like, as I've been saying earlier as well, everybody's been saying this, a release come upon her. And she said the pain has left. She said she can swallow now perfectly. It feels normal. Do you, do, you know what that, do you know what that release is? Some sickness is spiritual. You have to remember that. Some sickness is spiritual. And tonight, I was praying in the kingdom authority that God led me to pray in. Sometimes there's different veins you flow in. In this, in this great river of healing, there are different streams. And the stream in the river tonight was kingdom dominion. And that's why you're hearing people being released. Something new, it no longer had a right and it let go. It is spiritual. Pick her up a second. And what did you feel come through you right now? Is it hard to explain? something open. Well, look at you tonight. Jesus saves you, and then Jesus heals you. <laughs> what? Don't thank me. We're, let's thank Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, for what you did for this woman. Now, go rejoicing in your miracle. I like to tell, tell people, whatever you see good in me or, or bad in me, there's different ways to approach it. Whatever you see bad in me, give me grace. Whatever you see good in me, give him glory. Reuben, what happened here? David, I have Wolsey here. For the past couple of months, she's had a uh, palpitation issues. Doctors diagnosed her. They can't start over and say it again, but clearly. Yeah, did, uh, Wozy here for the past couple of months has had palpitation problems uh, with, for their heart. And she said uh, for the past couple of months, it's been a uh, mild pain. She's been going to the doctors. They've been giving her medication. Uh, tonight, when you instructed the audience to pray and go ahead and believe for their miracle, she started praying in tongues. And she said she felt as if someone pushed on her chest. And she said, the palpitations disappear. Whoa, say that again. You felt what? I feel somebody push me in my chest and that palpitation is gone. Church, that was the hand of Jesus. Because it's Jesus himself walking up and down these aisles, healing his people. Whoa. And I don't know how long they said the palpitations were there. Sometimes when I'm in this flow, I hear some things, and then at the same time, I'm listening to the Holy Spirit. But forever, whatever the length of time was that she had it, Jesus has made her whole. And I want to remind you, everyone watching online or here in person, yes, this is exciting. Yes, this is thrilling. But please remember that while we celebrate the miracle, you have to remember that there are people behind these miracles. Now, she's going to go home rejoicing in what the Lord has done for her. Now, you go to your doctor. Will you go to your doctor, have them check you? And then, Britton, we're getting their contact information. 
go to your doctor, have them check you, and then we're going to contact you and follow up and see what the Lord did for you. God bless you. Go rejoicing in your healing. What's going on, Rube? David, I have Chris here. About it's roughly... David again, huh? <laughs> yes, David. David, I have Chris here. About three to five years ago, uh, he messed up his ankle in a sports injury, and he said uh, he tore his ligaments right there. And he said he's had ankle problems. He hasn't had full range of motion. And when he instructed the audience to go ahead and pray and believe for their miracle, he said he felt the Lord say, loose. And he's, he's like, what, am, what are you talking about? And he said he felt this heat come upon his ankle, and he was able to move it properly. He says there's no more pain. How bad was the pain? Uh, it wouldn't be fully, like, like really bad, but throughout the years, I've always prayed for healing for my ankles, and he told me, God told me, he's like, hey, they're loose. They're loose. I'm like, what, what are you talking about? You mean God told you that while you were standing there? He said they're loose, and... Yeah, and he told me they were loose, and I'm just like, what are you talking about? And I just naturally started flipping my ankle, and I felt like even now, while I was in the line, they were still popping. I felt heat. And even when you said to the other guy, spiritual, I felt like God saying, like, your steps are now ordered by me. Like, I'm guiding you to different new places. Because um, there was a major fight for your life. The enemy fought hard to keep you in the world. And I saw that there was warfare over you. Lord, use him for your glory, I pray in the name of Jesus. Use him for your glory. In Jesus' name. Pick him up a second. What'd you feel go through you right now? I don't know. This is like, I feel like a wind. Just it. It's the wind of the spirit, my friend. That's the wind of the spirit. One of my favorite reactions, one time, a guy goes out and he gets up and he goes, this isn't real, this isn't real, this isn't real, this isn't real. This is the real deal here tonight, church. The presence of the Holy Spirit is moving in our midst. Reuben is uh, checking the stories. It's okay, take your time. We can honor the Lord, worship him. We like to verify the story. You see, if you come up and just start saying things and you get it wrong, sometimes you can exaggerate. And sometimes you can downplay it. You want to get it exactly right so that you can tell people's story and they're inspired by what the Lord did. Do you want, do you want what, what's happening with him to happen with you? And then lift your hands. It's in the room. Power's in the room. Reuben, my friend, what's the story here? David, I have Henry here. Uh, two years ago, has been uh, in pain, constant pain on his hip. And then three months ago, they diagnosed him that he had to get a hip replacement. He's been limping ever since. And he said, when you instructed the audience to pray and believe for their miracle, he said he felt this heat and like a pop. He said like it hurt when he felt this pop come upon him. And he said it was like a release as well. It came on him and he said like the pain left. The pain is gone from your hip. The pain is gone from my hip. Uh, my hip is, uh, my leg is short. And I felt like three, four times this release, pop, pop, almost uncomfortable. And I was like, I returned to Veronica and I said, Veronica, what? something's going on with my leg. <laughs> now, when I have my hands out like this and receiving, I actually felt like there were two hands holding my hands. That's how I was, it was just, I was just being filled and I was just receiving it. So this is, it's, it's great, it's awesome. And the pain is gone. The pain is, the pain is gone. Uh, it's been prophesied that by, by multiple people that it was a reconstructive miracle and so to receive prayers and I felt led to come here tonight to receive a prayer here and to receive this as part of my healing. You know what I love about the way the Lord healed you is no one can claim they laid hands on you but Jesus. It was all Jesus and I don't know why it is God just appoints times and circumstances with certain people I've had people come up and say oh I had so many others pray for me I said it wasn't my prayers it's the Holy Spirit it's his presence it's it's God and to him alone belongs the glory Lord I thank you for your power now moving through this man use his life for your glory in Jesus name and the church said can we just take a moment and say thank you Jesus thank you Jesus and then Ruben's just, you know what, Ruben? I sense a shift anyway. Get their information. We'll get their stories later. All of you lift your hands. Begin to pray in the Holy Spirit. Oh, 
Bring that guy with the, uh, the NASA jacket up here. I don't know who he is. We met briefly in the lobby yesterday, correct? Now you, how long were you standing in line today? Yeah. How long? One hour. An hour in line. How about yesterday? About an hour. This guy was one of the first ones in line, they told me. And that spiritual hunger. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. Lift your hands. Holy Spirit, fill him to overflowing. Let that spiritual hunger receive of your presence tonight. Blow like a wind, Holy Spirit. Stretch your hands toward him. Blow like a wind, Holy Spirit. That's it. That's it. Just receive it. Sing it, Steve. Worthy is a man. Worthy is a man. You are holy. You want God's power? Come stand holy. up here. Holy. Are you Lord God Almighty? Worthy is a lamb. Worthy is a lamb. You are holy. Holy. Are you Lord God?
that the power of God is all over you. You came hungry for a touch from God tonight. Lift your hands. Lord, fill him with fire in the name of Jesus. Whoa. Fill him with the fire of the Lord. You want that? Bring this woman up here. Quick, 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 quick. In the name of Jesus, be filled with the fire of the Holy Ghost. Bring this guy, quick. Right here. Be filled in the name of Jesus with power from on high. In the name of Jesus. Pardon? Yes, sir. We want that fire. He says, we want that fire. We want that fire. Then receive it now in the name of Jesus. You want that? We're going to have to start catching sections here, gentlemen. Just form a chain, I'm telling you. Bring them here. Come here. Fire. shirt get over here Give him a shout of victory and praise for what he's done in this house tonight. Pardon? Lord, touch your mind in Jesus' name. Touch your mind. That's the power of God on you. I can never say no. I can never say no. It's the love of God. He loves her and he loves your daughter, sir. I know if I brought my daughter up like that and I asked for prayer, I'd appreciate someone praying for her. You know, you don't need me to lay hands on you. How many of you sense that power just moving across this room? And if you're that 1% who felt nothing, there's nothing wrong with you. God has timing and two things. God has timing and sometimes we just overthink things. So desperate for an encounter, sometimes that desire for an encounter itself becomes a distraction from having an encounter. But that's for a later time. Let's just say thank you, Jesus, for what you've done and what you're going to do. Let us take from this, Lord. Touch those online. Where's Justin? Justin, come here. Touch those online in Jesus' name them receive a touch of your power, healing and deliverance in the name of Jesus. Take a moment, just a few seconds or so, just, I like to say, just marinate in it, marinate in it.
love watching God's people worship. Sing it again. such an elegance about the way the Holy Spirit moves. There's such a beauty, such a holiness, such a beauty. You deserve the glory and the honor. Sir, you're missing a shoe. Lord, we lift our hands in worship. We lift your holy name. That's how you know God's moving. That and when the mascara is running. You deserve the glory and the honor. Lord, we lift our hands and worship as we bless your holy name. For you are great. You do miracles so great. There is no one else like you. There is no one else like you. For you are great. You do miracles so great. There is no one else like you. There is no one else like you. Once more, give them a hand of praise, church. We thank you, Lord. 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 Now, just, just for a second, please take your seats. I need maybe five more minutes. Five more minutes. I need to take an offering for the ministry. And some people are jetting for the doors now. I'm just kidding. I need to take an offering for the ministry. I didn't do it in the middle because there was such a flow to his power, I didn't want to disrupt it. You know, we have our schedules sometimes, and sometimes it's best that we don't go with our schedules. And so usually I'll pray, I'll, 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 I'll preach the gospel, people get saved, then we take an offering in the middle, and then we pray for the sick. I usually don't like to do it in a different order, but today the Holy Spirit had me do it. Look, just give as the Holy Spirit leads you, you watching online. DavidHernandezMinistries.com slash donate. Here's the wonderful thing. Last night, every penny that was needed to cover the event came in. Every penny. So thank you for your generosity. Thank you, those of you watching online. So tonight's offering, what we're going to do is we're going to take a portion of it and we're going to put it toward the brand new TV studio that we're building in Austin. Those of you watching online, go to davidhernandezministries.com slash donate. Um, those of you in person, you can use that as well if you just want to get it done and not fill out an envelope. I need everyone to take a moment, you watching online and you here, to close your eyes. Close your eyes. Ask the Holy Spirit what amount you should sow into the ministry today. Just ask Him. Some of you, He's going to challenge you. Those whom God has blessed financially, he'll challenge you more. I think sometimes we think that because we're walking in financial blessing, that we're above the challenge of the Spirit. No, let him challenge you too. I really sense by the Spirit, there are a couple people here and watching online. I sense this. And I rarely say things like this, guys. You know my heart, you know me. So I'm not going to name amounts, gimmicks, or anything like that. But there's a couple people here 
the Lord's been leading you to do something very significant for that studio. Don't just do it out of emotion, please. If this word doesn't apply to you, ignore it. But there's a couple people here and watching live. You've been thinking and praying about doing something significant for that studio in Austin. And you know it's you because you were asking for confirmation for that. And I think you even talked to your spouse about it. But it's a very specific thing. You, this is a confirmation, not a prophetic word. So I don't want anybody going and emptying their savings on a whim or emotion, anything like that. I don't believe in manipulating God's people that way. That's, 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 that's dangerous to do. But there's somebody watching, and there's even a couple of you in here, you've been praying about doing something very significant for that studio. Large, large amount we're talking. And you've just been praying for the confirmation. You've been wanting to do it. You've been thinking about doing it. You've been planning to do it. You have the resources to do it. And this is just that confirmation to do it. Everyone else, just hear from the Holy Spirit. There's no magic amount or anything like that. We don't give to get, church. We don't give to get. We give so the gospel might go forward and souls might be saved. So give online today. Ask the Holy Spirit. Everyone say, Holy Spirit, what should I give? Wait for his answer. Okay. I believe you heard from God, and I know you, the people of God, love to give to his work, and you're very generous, and we appreciate you. So would the ushers please come forward with the envelopes? And we're going to hand out the envelopes. You're going to take one. If you don't want to use an envelope, you don't have to. You can literally just type in that, davidhernandezministries.com slash donate. You'll be done in like 60 seconds, right there on your phone. And if you're using an envelope, we request that you fill out the envelope completely name, address, phone number, email, everything, so that we can contact you in any case of anything, and we can also update you on where your support is going. We give so the gospel can continue to go forward. Thank you to everyone who gave yesterday, here and online. We covered this event. This event is paid for. It's done. Now we're going to put some of the resources toward the studio. Some of the resources are going to go back into the ministry. Some of the resources are going to go toward the next event. There's lots of things we're doing with it. Um, we're actually even taking portions, and we took a portion, I think, uh, I think last month. It's either last month or this month we're going to do it. Uh, they need more laptops in Zimbabwe, and, and we're actually gonna, we actually got them a computer there at our school in Zimbabwe. So we're supporting that. Um, that, I believe, we did last month. But either way, your support goes to the general fund in the ministry, and all these things are covered. But we are going to take a portion from tonight, and we're going to put it into the TV studio. If you specifically want it to go to the studio... Please note that on the envelope for the studio, and we'll make sure that it gets counted in that. If you're watching online and you want it to go for the studio online, you're going to go to davidhernandezministries.com slash expand. If you're watching online, slash expand, and that's how you can give it to the studio there. Other than that, go to davidhernandezministries.com slash donate. Make your contribution. Help us continue to take the gospel around the world in the power of the Holy Spirit through events and media. This is what we're called to do, to support the gospel, and we thank you for it. We thank you for it. So, how many of you need just a couple minutes to fill that out? Okay, a couple minutes, and I'll just talk just for a little while longer. I don't want to keep God's people here. Can you believe we've been in the service for over three hours? Went by like that, didn't it? That's, that's what it's like when you go in the power of God in that way. It's almost like a time war. And Pastor TJ, would you and your family be available to meet afterwards? Okay, good. So Ruben will make sure he, he gets in there. And we so appreciate all of you who are giving and supporting. It touches our hearts to know that we have God's people standing with us. Thank you for those of you giving online. If you're giving online, I will see your name. I will see your name come up. The, the team sends me the updates on all of the names. And I thank God for you. So go and support. Slash expand for the studio or slash donate just for general giving. The rest of you here, so what God has spoken to you, and all of it, bottom line, is going to go into soul winning and taking the world for the kingdom of God. So, Father, we thank you for these givers, and I pray you bless each one of them. Lord, we know they give not to get, not to receive. They give so the gospel can go forward. And I thank you for that, Father. So we pray tonight that you would use our resources as a weapon is in your hand and help us at the ministry to properly steward the resources that are being gifted to us. Give us wisdom and guide us. In the name of Jesus, we pray. And everybody said, amen. 
For those of you watching online, I love you. I appreciate you. Don't forget that on Wednesday, we're going to be live for Viral Revival. That's Wednesdays at 3 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. I think this week I'm talking about how to overcome religious mindsets. So you're going to want to tune in for that. And that is it for this event here, live from Orlando, Florida, where the power of God moved mightily. Thank you for tuning in. And remember, until next time, nothing is impossible with God.